If you are just starting out on YouTube and trying to grow your channel, I know it can be so challenging. My channel has just turned one this month and I have learned so much in the past year. So in today's video, I wanted to share my YouTube journey and especially some of the things I wish I knew beforehand, which will hopefully motivate you or inspire you to keep going. Hello and welcome. If you're new here, my name's Ike. I share videos about life in my 30s, living and working in Sydney, and my passion for traveling and with a sprinkle of beauty and fashion here and there. In today's video, I wanted to do something a little bit different and have a chilled coffee chit chat with you, essentially spill the tea on some of the secrets that have really helped me to stay motivated and slowly grow on YouTube. I am so thrilled to share that after one year and about 30-ish videos, so around two videos a month, I have just hit 1,000 subscribers and been invited to join the YouTube Partnership Program. If my small channel can do it, you are definitely definitely on your way to. Let's get started. When I started my channel, I was so worried about picking a niche. I was overanalyzing what videos I should make, what I should talk about, what my channel should be about. So much so that I almost didn't start. And that made me really sad because it just makes me think about all the things that I could have missed out on. However, this mindset is kind of crazy because if you were starting any other hobby, you really wouldn't have to have everything all figured out. You would just kind of start and see where you go. It's only when it comes to YouTube that there is this need to have everything clearly defined. And I think that comes from a fear of failing publicly and that's because we are putting ourselves out there on the internet. However, looking back on my own journey, the number one advice would be you don't have to worry about picking a niche. You just have to start. A good example of this is I moved to Sydney about five or six years ago and I decided to take up dancing class. I have never ever danced before in my life, let alone take classes. And so I took a few classes, jazz, funk, contemporary, hip hop, and then I discovered K-pop, which I absolutely fell in love with. This was during my Blackpink era. Yes, the dream of being a K-pop star. And I think my dance journey is kind of like my YouTube journey. I had to try a few different classes over many, many months before I discovered what I really liked. As a beginner, it is harsh but true, and this is a little bit of tough love, but in all honesty, no one really cares, which is a great thing because there's no expectations, and that is the perfect time to continue experimenting. It will take many videos before you discover if you even like making YouTube videos, try sit down talking videos, try vlogging, pull out your camera during your next holiday. How will you know the videos that you like to make until you try? It's only now that after about 30 or 40 videos that I'm starting to get a sense of the sorts of videos that I like to make and the overall vibe of my channel and the community that I want to be a part of. I will say though that if you don't pick a niche, it may take you a little bit longer. But I think YouTube is all about embracing slow growth. By experimenting, I actually think you're future-proofing your channel because if you have a few vlogs, a few tutorials, a few sit down talking head videos from the very beginning as you grow and evolve your channel your community will grow with you and expect a variety of different formats and types of videos you don't have to pick a niche and you don't have to box yourself in the beginning you don't have to tell people about your YouTube journey until you're ready my YouTube channel just turned one and the only person that really knows about me uploading videos online is my partner Adam and my puppy dog Clifford and that's because we live in a tiny apartment and I cannot avoid it. My friends and family don't actually know about my YouTube channel yet. I'm not necessarily trying to hide my YouTube channel, it's more so just a little corner of the internet for me just to have a bit of freedom to be creative, especially when I'm still trying to figure out what my channel is about. It just removes some of the pressure around caring about what people think, even though I know there are strangers on the internet that may be watching my videos, but there is just something about knowing 
that your friends and family are watching. I don't know, it just kind of adds that extra layer about caring what people think. If my friends and family were to discover my YouTube about a year ago, I think I would have been a little shy about it that's natural but now if they came across my youtube videos i actually don't think i'd mind but i also haven't gone out of my way to tell everyone it just takes a little bit of time to build up confidence about putting yourself out there and so it's okay to give yourself some time also think about why you're creating youtube videos and who you're creating it for for me i've always wanted to connect with people in the content creation space and have a creative outlet from my nine to five job. And there just weren't that many people in my current circle that were interested in the content creation space. So while telling my friends and family may have added like five subscribers, it wouldn't really have contributed to the overall community that I wanted to be a part of. Think of it like dating. If you were dating someone, uh, you probably wouldn't tell your friends after a couple of dates or until you knew it was a bit serious, you know, until it became official. That's kind of how I think about starting a YouTube channel. For the first five or ten videos, you probably don't even know if you want to continue this or it's something that you want to do forever. So it's okay not to tell people until you've become YouTube official. Unless you want to, of course. If you want to grow on YouTube then I'm a big believer that you kind of have to focus on one platform at a time, at least at the very beginning. You can do almost anything but you can't do everything. You kind of have to consume YouTube and love YouTube in order to be on YouTube. YouTube is not Instagram and it is definitely not TikTok. The content on here is different and the community here is completely different. I've seen so many content creators on other platforms with hundreds and thousands of subscribers try and transition on to YouTube and for whatever reason it doesn't quite resonate and I think it is partly because they're not active here on YouTube. For me, I've put most of my creative energy into YouTube. My heart is with long form content and storytelling, essentially just documenting my life. And I feel like I just can't do that with short form content. YouTube is such a long journey. It takes a long time to film, edit, publish, and it takes an even longer time to build a community. But once you do, I feel like the community here is so much more richer, so supportive and encouraging. And I honestly can't say the same for other platforms. Don't get me wrong, I'm not bagging Instagram. I think it's a great way to keep up to date with friends and family, but I have no aspirations whatsoever to grow on other platforms. One of the worst things you can do after filming a vlog or filming a sit down video like this one is actually to watch the raw footage because whenever I do that, I feel so deflated and I think, who is going to watch this? To be creative and like I watch it back thinking, oh my goodness, have I just wasted a whole afternoon filming. So I just don't watch raw footage anymore. So what do I mean by this? As soon as I finish filming, recording, I will upload the clips and try and start somewhat editing straight away before I even watch what's on the clip. That includes cutting out the really long pauses, trimming the ends of the clips, just so that I can get a rough storyline before even watching the video clips. This helps me to see the potential of a video and from there I have learnt to trust the power of editing. You'll be so surprised how much text, graphic, background music, b-roll can add to a very simple video clip. I'll try and insert some examples of some of my recent videos and vlogs and you can just see how much of a difference editing makes. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty here. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. 
goodness, it's so pretty here. <gasps> I have a love-hate relationship with editing. I hate it because it takes so long, but I also love it because when you can turn something very simple into something very interesting, it is very rewarding. No video is gonna be perfect, but you can always edit even after you film. Oh God, if I am sweating and it is so bright in here now. I don't want to encourage burnout even for me as a very small channel i felt pressure to try and publish at least one video a week which is so hard while balancing a nine to five job but what has helped me stay motivated is to try and create a little bit every day that contributes to my youtube channel now creating every day is different from publishing every day Creating every day could be as simple as coming up with new video ideas, filming some b-roll for future videos, working on thumbnails, and it can be as little as 5 to 10 minutes each and every day. I also try and tailor my tasks to my energy levels. So on days where I have very high energy, those are days where I may film and script. But on other days where I have really low energy, I might look to find music on Epidemic Sound or find templates on Canva that I could use for a future video. But I try my very best to create a little bit each day because I find that if I take long breaks it just makes it that much harder to get back into the rhythm of coming up with ideas, filming, scripting, then uploading. But when I'm creating a little each day it just helps me flex that creative muscle. So that's something that has definitely helped me continue my momentum throughout this past year. When I started making YouTube videos, I was so focused on making good videos and that was things like sticking to the script, delivering valuable information, making sure I got my point across, that I almost forgot to just show me. Looking back at some of my first few videos, I feel like I sound almost robotic and I definitely don't think I sound like that when I talk to my friends and family. And I just wish I had shown a bit more of the other side of me that my friends and family get to see. And when I think about how I consume YouTube and the YouTubers that I follow, yes, there is good content, but it's usually not because of the actual content itself, but because of the vibe, their personality, their energy, and their perspectives on certain topics or their stages in life. It's easy to say, just be authentic but what does that actually mean as an example for me I'm sharing my YouTube journey of someone that is starting their content creation journey a little later in life balancing a nine-to-five corporate career I mean I grew up in a time without the internet and my perspective may be quite different from someone that is from Gen Z that has always grown up with social media at the end of the day you won't be everyone's cup of tea and that's okay just remember to sprinkle in a little little bit of you in each of your videos. If you are just starting out, please do not give up on your dream of growing a YouTube channel. The only way you can really fail is if you quit. I'm so passionate about this topic because I'm still learning and growing myself. If you have any tips for small content creators, please leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then do check out my other one on how YouTube changed my life. Also, do consider subscribing if you're on a similar YouTube journey. I hope you are having an amazing day no matter where you are in the world and I will catch you in the next one. Take care. Leave with me. The night is young, so are we.